What's it like being back here at Granite Bay, kind of working out and kind of back where it all started? Uh, I love coming back here. I usually kind of try and come back here in the off season, um, you know, as much as I can. So it feels really good and um, just excited for everything to get going. And, and um, it's good to be close to my family and friends and, and just enjoy it with them. Is it important to surround yourself with familiar settings, familiar faces as you kind of go on to this next step? To me, yeah. I mean, especially right now because um, it's such a short time. The, work, the last thing that I want to do is go somewhere new and have to uh, build another relationship with somebody. So that's why I come back here and work out. And, um, you know, I'm close with Billy and uh, it just feels comfortable. It feels right. What do you like most about, about this place? About this, this, gym? this gym here? Yeah. It, Billy, honestly. I mean, he does such a good job of, of making workouts creative and challenging me athletically. And, and, and just I feel like I'm always doing something different in here. So um, it's it's honestly like a place like no other. So I, I love coming in here. I remember back to where I talked to you right before you were about to go off to SC. And I imagine that four, gosh, four, four years ago. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, just bit. how different do you feel from that time? Oh, man. It, it was such a growing experience for me. Such a mature, like, in the maturation process for, for me as, as, as anyone going into college. But, you know, I just left and um, leaving in January of my senior year, just I kind of went in blind and, and kind of learned on my own. And I think it was the most beneficial time of my life because it was, I was, I was 17 years old and I had to figure out my ways and, and make, make relationships and figure out, you know, the best way, you know, of getting on the field and how to and I prove myself as well. So um, today I just feel a lot more confident in who I am and my football abilities and, and honestly just along for the ride at this point. Well, I can go anywhere and, and, and I just feel like I'm, I'm my, my mind is in the right place to go out in there and, and, and compete at a high level. So I just feel, I feel like I've grown up a lot. When you figure out, I mean, you were going to SC and we, I think we talked about it for over, over a year. It was like you had committed early to them. Yeah. That's where you wanted to be. You stayed there. You played four years there. I mean, what, <laughs> once you stepped foot on campus, was it everything you expected? Um, there's, I mean, there's, you know, I, I think as you walk in as a freshman, you know, leaving high school, it's, you expect to play for the same staff all four years. And, and really that's very rare today. You know, you, you get this, some of the schools that the coaches are pretty solidified there, but, um, you know, it wasn't everything that I expected. And because of, you know, you, you just always think like above and beyond, but I think it was everything that I wanted. I think I learned a lot. I think that I, um, you know, we went through some good times and some bad times. And I think overall, that's really important. You got You have, you can't just always be on a high and, and winning it. You know, you got to experience a loss every now and then and, and some tough and some troubles because it just makes you grow up and experience more. And, and I feel like bring more to the table. So um, I feel like SC was everything that I needed at that point and at, at this point and, and pu it pushed me to where I am today. What was the hardest part? Um, I think, again, I think changing staffs was, was difficult, creating a new relationship um, with a guy that, with Clancy Pendergrass, who, um, you know, I really admire and, and you know, I, I believe in him so much. And it, when he first came in, it was, it was hard. It was different. It was not, you know, it wasn't as comfortable to me. And it just, it took a lot of effort for me to, to build a relationship with him. And, and I'm glad I did because he's really important. Does that kind of give you your first taste of what an NFL experience could be like? Absolutely. That's what, that's a, one of the first things that I said when I left is this last staff at SC was very much NFL-like. And it was business. And it was, um, you know, I think that's important because it's it's what it is at the next level. There's not a lot of buddy-buddy relationships. It's, you know, it's it's quick to, to turn around. And it's important to always be at your best that every day and 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 in the end it's all about football your signature moment if you had to pinpoint one signature moment at sc what do you think that was i think the utah game my freshman year um three interceptions i feel like that's i'll always look back on that and remember one of the greatest days of my life and that was something that was almost kind of just you know what happened there i don't know why that was the case and um but it was that was one of the most special nights of my life and um and then you know, we look back, we won a Pac-12 championship. I'll never forget that. I thought that was a blast. And um, it was something that hadn't been done by a Pac-12 South team in like eight years. So um, that's, that's something for me that I'll never, I'll never forget. And, and a Rose Bowl. I mean, yeah, I missed the last third of the game, but it was our fourth of the game. But um, that was something that I'll never forget either. So that we had some very, very special moments in my career there. Those interceptions, and I'm going to ask this because if I don't know, how many did you finish with? Really? Three. Three. Three and a pick six, yeah. And all in the same game? Yep. And then never, I mean, does that even kind of bother your mind a bit? Um, well, now it's, I've kind of moved on and, right. you know, there for a couple of weeks, I was like, what's going on here? But um, yeah, I think that sometimes I look back on that and just kind of remember the, almost like the good days. It was, yeah. that was fun. It was, it was being a freshman out there. It's a lot less pressure and uh, you just kind of run around. And, but today I just feel, 
you know, we're moved on from that. It's four years, but I'm just trying to get better in other ways. For people who have no idea, uh, I know the minute the season ends for you, yeah. this is just a crazy time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're going all over the place, combine, workouts, uh, meeting with teams, talking with teams constantly. For, how do you just kind of explain this process for, for you and where you're at? Um, yeah, a, a constant phrase that gets thrown out is hurry up and wait. You hurry up to somewhere and you wait. We went to the combine, you hurry up to get there, you hurry up to get in line, and then you wait for two hours. So, and then now I'm sitting here and I'm, we hurried up through this entire three month process and now I'm just waiting around, you know, figuring, figuring out what's, what's next. And um, it's a lot of, you're, you spend, I've spent a lot of time by myself, um, training, training in uh, Orange County. I was in my room a ton. We were all just kind of hanging out in our rooms. And yeah. it's a lonely process. It's, you know, you, it's, you're doing new things and, working out with new people and you're, you know, you're doing new workouts and stuff. And um, it's not comfortable, but it's, it's honestly pretty fun. I've really enjoyed it just because it's, you know, it's, it's something that I've not looked forward to, but it's kind of held above me, my, above my head, put on my shoulders um, to run a 40 yard dash, to go to the combine and, and be in shorts. And, um, you know, for some people they don't realize like how, you know, kind of nerve wracking that is. You're, you're in a, you're in a, in the Lucas Oil Stadium and you're just, you're, you're surrounded by co coaches looking at you face to face, and it's just—it's just scary. It's, it, there's very times where it's kind of you know it's you're worried about it, and now that it's over, it feels really good. You know, feels, feel like a piece of meat. Uh, at some points, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's exactly how it feels. What's the craziest question that you encountered? Um, you know, I didn't get a ton of crazy questions. Um, I think one of the one of the weirdest was like asked me um, what was the most illegal thing I've ever done and not been caught for. Um, what would I, what would I rank myself in Madden? And then what would I rank myself in five years? And those are just hard questions. Cause you're like, Oh, how do I be, how do I sound confident in myself, but also not sound arrogant? Right. Um, so it was, those are really just kind of questions that, and then, you know, you'll, they'll say something or you'll say something and they're, they're talking about how you don't think fast enough or whatever. And they just want to pick at you as, as much as possible and see how you react. So the interviews are tough and, um, but they're fun. That's my favorite part is, is getting out, getting up there to talk about football and, and explain the game that I know. I know things get going tonight at the draft. It's on our station. I just wonder, do you have in your mind an expectation? Do you feel like you know what's going to happen this weekend? I think the worst thing you can do is walk in with an expectation. The coaches, they are so unpredictable, and uh, I'm just going in and, and along with the ride. Um, you know, it's I'm just going to go enjoy some time with my family, and, and I probably won't watch the draft all that much. I'll just keep my phone by me and play some cornhole, play a little bit of spike ball, and just, just do as much as I can to keep my mind off of it and have fun. Final two for you. When you think, um, I know she has a couple too, but like uh, when you're going through this, you have familiar faces, friends. I know there's a lot of outside influences, people probably hitting you up. Hey, man, where are you going to go? Do you try to block that out, or do you try and enjoy that? Because I know once NFL season gets going, some of those people – Tend to get the yeah, push the side a little bit. It's I mean it all depends on who people are. You know it's yeah. you, you can't throw you know you can't turn down friends that you've had for the rest of your life or for your whole to your whole entire life just because they've been with you and you're you know the last thing that I want I want to be known for is changing and being you know let this all get to my head. I want I mean this is why I come back here um, year after year because it's where I grew up. It's where my friends are. It's where my family is and it's where what really built me is essentially. So um, but you know I got. I have a really tight group of friends here from high school and that I see all the time and um, I would do anything for them if, you know, when the time comes. So, um, I mean, that's kind of a tough question just because, you know, I, I haven't yeah. dealt with that, um, but people are kind of coming out of the woodworks and, you know, it just kind of depends on who you are. And then, I mean, I know it's probably nothing new for you, but when you think about, you know, your dream, I mean, this is an NFL's lifelong dream. Not everyone gets to fulfill their dreams and your moments from doing so. I mean, yeah. Do you, Kind of pinch yourself a little bit. Um, no, I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> I, I don't feel it at all. It hasn't hit me today. I woke up this morning. I was like, "Whoa, it's day one of the draft." Not like I wasn't, you know, I'm not gonna go day one, but like I was just like, "This is," it. It came so fast, and it's weird, but I'm. It hasn't hit me yet. I don't think it will until I get a phone call. Um, to be honest with you, just because I'm, I don't think I want to let it hit me. That it's because I just think that it's. It just makes it feel longer. I just want to live my life and come in here and work out and just be productive and um, whatever team calls is, I'm just going to be ecstatic and get ready to work. Yeah, I mean, obviously you mentioned not having expectations, but based on your experience at the Combine and these last several months, is there a team that has expressed interest or that you're feeling, you know, yeah. that you could be the biggest contributor to? Um, yeah, there's definitely teams I feel like are um, more interested than others um, and teams that I think that um, 
I could be beneficial for. Uh, you know, I think, but I, in, the, in the end, you just never know. And there's, there's so much strategy behind it. And, you know, a lot of teams that don't want to say they are interested in you because they don't want to, I want, to, want to let other people know. And, you know, it's always the first thing is when the coach just calls me, he's like, is this your number? Is this your draft day phone number? What teams have contacted you? What teams are interested in you? So, you know, there could be a team that I've never even talked to just because they don't want to they don't want me to say to anybody else that they're interested in me so they can either get me as late as possible or what so um you have no idea and i just that's kind of what i'm going with is i'm just gonna be ready for whatever team wants me and, and you know I'm, I'm sure you've been in contact with guys who've come from this area who've been through this experience and have kind of lent their wisdom yeah. i mean just based on what you have experienced could even that prepare you for what this whole process is like no it's something you got to do for yourself just because you just you don't understand the, the, the emotions behind it and the feelings and um, it's not it's kind of indescribable so um, you know I haven't really talked to too many people I'm just kind of experiencing it for myself and having fun. And what is it about this area I mean we got you know six plus guys that we're looking at for the next couple of days that are going to get the call what is it about this area that produces such talent like this? Yeah I don't you know I think it's grown so much over the last couple of years and um, football is in California, I mean, down south in, in Southern California, it's it's huge, it's massive, and it's not, I mean, I, but I feel like it's, you're seeing a lot of guys coming to Folsom and, and Del Oro, and um, the football's getting getting huge around here, so um, I'm pumped for all the guys that are that are coming out, and it's, it's going to be fun to watch where they go, and um, it just feels weird that it's gone by so fast. I mean, I remember, still remember playing with Jake my senior year, and, and then I remember when we first walked into to school together, I mean, and seeing how he was doing at Washington, and, and it just feels weird that we're already here. Um, you got guys following in your footsteps. Tattersall, Craig, coming from Granite Bay. Yeah, it's big. Like kind of the things you've kind of laid the foundation for a little bit? I uh, try to. I think it's, you know, it's as many guys as we can get out of Granite Bay is important to, to me. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, I, I think I, um, I'm just excited. I mean, just seeing those guys come out and see what they do at, at Cal and stuff like that. So it's going to be cool. What's an NFL get, team getting in, in camp tonight? Um, I think you're going to get a really intelligent, instinctual football player, a guy that's really serious and is, and is a natural-born leader, um, and a guy that you just never have to worry about on a Saturday, Friday night, Saturday night. It's, I'm, you know, I'm all business, and um, I want to bring nothing but, you know, positive and, um, and good vibes to the team and, and just be a leader in the locker room.